Hey everybody, Chris Nguyen here, and now I'm going to start working on the hair and other facial features. And there's a couple of things that I have to figure out uh, how I'm going to do. The ears, the hair, and the nose will all be part of the same mesh, the same grease pencil object as the body. Um, but very likely I will do the eyes and the mouth separate because the eyes have this extra complication of the lids and blinks and all that stuff. So I have to figure that out. Actually, I know exactly how to do that. There'll be a tutorial on it coming up. And um, for the mouth, one of the tricky things that I have to do is I have to draw a separate set of mouth shapes for each one of these turns or each one of these slices of the turn and it will be easier to have that all set up on uh, a separate grease pencil object so this one doesn't get too complex uh, plus I'm going to have the ability to turn off the mouth entirely so I can hand animate it if I need to all right, so I am going to first figure out the hair. Actually, no, first uh, first thing I'm gonna do is in looking at the this original drawing, I noticed that if I get the nose at the right size, the eyes that I have right now on my reference model are a little bit smaller and so I'm just going to go into the, the grease pencil object as part of my reference model and scale those eyes up a little bit more so I have them as the reference as I'm drawing the eyes and all that. It'll also give me a better indication of where the hair should follow. Because right now I feel like the hair in my reference that I have right now is a little bit too high. It doesn't come down far enough. So I'm gonna select the entire eye here and that one. And I'm just hitting S and I'm scaling it. If you notice, I have my 3D cursor set at the nose. I was able to select that object and then, if you don't know this command, shift S and then you can do cursor to selection. So I select the nose object and made that the center. So I scaled that up a little bit and then I'm gonna move it down since it's it raised up since I scaled it up from the nose. Move this back in and see how that looks. I think they could still be bigger and angled a little bit more because all the female characters in Factions have this sort of cat eye look. So scaling that up, there's no real particular amount here. All right, this time I don't want to go from the cursor. I'm going to do global and bounding box center. And I wanna pay attention to the amount of rotation I'm, I need to rotate around Y. So 2.8 degrees. Now I can just take that number when I do the rest, the other side, and just do the negative value of that. I can just art, arbitrarily move this and then once I get that number, do minus. I think they're probably more angled and now they've also gotten kind of far apart. But if you notice in my original drawing, the, the distance of each eye from the nose is not exactly consistent. So I just need to go with what feels right. I am going to call that done and then I'm going to get my uh, hairline a little bit more accurate. It's actually not that far off, but one of the things I have one of the thing I have to do is I have the shape of the head, but the hair is actually taller than that because you know it has volume on top of there. So I got to get that line right, but the bottom line of the hair looks looks like it works pretty good. I could save myself a lot of work by just finishing the the reference a little bit more. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn off that layer, go back to my reference object, get a better drawing of that. 
I need to change this back to surface. And I'm actually just going to erase this and redraw it. Since I got that part pretty close, I'm going to do some sculpting and get my reference drawing back to that point. All right, back to my real drawing. But one of the things that you have to remember when you're doing something like this is that you're drawing volumes, not shapes. If you're doing a very graphic style cartoon like say Dexter's Laboratory or something, then maybe you are drawing shapes, but I think it still helps if you understand the volumes. And if you're just trying to draw shapes, you're trying to draw a shape from memory rather than what that shape represents. And you'll see jumps from drawing to drawing. You'll try and replicate the shape, but especially as a, as a shape's traveling around something, it changes. And if you understand the volume better, you'll understand the underlying shape should be. Now we get the introduction to, and even though what I said about drawing the volumes, I'm, I'm definitely checking in with the shape uh, that I have in my reference because it still does give me a hint, but it's it's something that you can't quite give over completely to the reference. It's, it's more beneficial that you actually understand what you're drawing in there rather than just replicating exactly what you're seeing there. You'll learn that in figure drawing that it's, it's very, and it's something I'm not very good at, figure drawing in general. It's knowing the underlying structure will make you a better figure drawer. Even if you're good at like drawing the lines that you, the contours of what you see, knowing the structure underneath that will be very beneficial. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward through most of this because it's largely the same process as any of the other stuff I've shown so far. I'm just going through frame by frame, jumping back and forth, checking how the lines shift and uh, all that business, making sure that it's consistent from drawing to drawing. And as I've said before, uh, I could use onion skin and I do use it occasionally. However, mostly I'm jumping from frame to frame to see how that change happens as, a, as it's jumping. You get a much clearer sense of uh, differences when you're jumping back and forth because you'll see those little pops that you don't see necessarily with the onion skin. And you might see little areas uh, where with the onion skin on where you see that the lines don't line up perfectly, but you don't really get that same sense. And as I hit play later, you'll see how the, the there's a boil to the lines. They start moving around. And also throughout this whole process, you'll notice I occasionally jump back to the sculpt tool. Uh, a lot of times it's easier to make the, the little adjustments that I might need rather than erasing and redrawing, just using the sculpt tool and sort of pushing the lines around. There's also a uh, feature in the sculpt tool that allows you to make the line thicker or thinner. Uh, lines that are already drawn make them thicker or thinner. Uh, and that's very handy for saving you the trouble of constantly erasing and redrawing. Okay, so it's getting there. There's still some jump to the line itself, meaning <clears throat> it's not completely consistent. It's got a crawl to it, but the overall volume is there. And then I just have one more drawing to do in here. All right, looks like I pretty much got it. Like I said, there's some crawl there that if the point of this was to make just the thing spinning here, I would spend a lot more time trying to get that perfect. But I think for the sake of my uh, setup that I'm doing, it will be fine. 
and maybe I end up kicking myself because of this. Um, so now I'm going to work on the ears, which I'm going to make a, a new layer on top of there. One of the things that's tricky that what, why I thought about putting this on the same layer um, is which line goes in front is different at different times. Right now I want the hair in front of the ear. But as it cut, starts coming around, you'd want okay. the back of the. So I'm now sped up 16 times behind because, the like earlier, and another it's reason to keep it the same process now. that I did. I can for do that mirrors and all that stuff. I did with the other I'm going through features. doing the ears, following the the 3D a lot closer as the ear travels around, and uh, just doing the same sculpt. To try and adjust the shapes and playing around and I also do the same mirror technique that I did for the breasts in an earlier thing where I draw one half of the turn and then do the mirror over and you can see how that's done in the previous video the other thing that I do once I get all this uh, all the outlines done is I go in and create the fills uh, for the hair and the ears. And again, it's the same process that I did before in the other videos if you want to see more on that. All right, so there we go with that one. We got the hair, the ears, the nose all done. Uh, there's still a little bit of movement on the top of the head that I need to fix, but I'm gonna end the video here. And next I will start working on the mouth and eyes. Bye everybody.